Alrighty, traders, welcome back here in the uh, the Forex Morning Coffee, and I do apologize for that little uh, short interruption uh, uh, with regards to, to the mic. Uh, we've got all that taken care of. Hey, listen, yeah, welcome back to another Morning Coffee session. Now, uh, listen, yeah, uh, as I was saying early on, um, uh, let's just get be let's just be real about where we at right now with regards to the trading. This last couple of weeks have been crazy. I right? crazy, I tell you. All right. Listen, yeah, I looked on the pound Aussie dollar and I saw pound Aussie dollar yesterday, all right, well, at least the, uh, the, the, uh, the Wednesday evening, it was Wednesday evening, yeah, Wednesday evening, I saw the pound uh, Aussie dollar rally a thousand pips up, rally a thousand pips up at the open. Then, during the London trading session, drop two thousand pips and then recover in the New York trading session another 500 pips. This year. That is 3,500 pip move in just one trading day. 3,500 pips going up 1,000, down 2,000, up another 500. Are we kidding? All right. This is insane. I have never seen in the 30 years of years, 30 years of trading that I've traded, I've never seen the markets move this volatile. All right. So let's just be real. All right. And there's nothing else but coffee in this cup. What we got to realize is, when these type of things happen and we follow a certain strategy and this strategy is a counter trend strategy and we have aggressive move like we have right here, we are going to take some losses. Now, the question here is how much did you lose? If you lost big time, listen here, big time should never be a factor, but more than you should, more than you calculated to risk on that particular setup or this particular trading strategy. Yes, I can understand. We may have taken a little bit deeper losses than we should have. So we're in recovery mode, all right? It's, it is what it is. We're in recovery mode, and that's fine. We're going to go take a look at the market. We're going to address the market. But I'm going to look at this more from a trend-based strategy, right? I'm going to look at this in, in the recovery mode. I'm going to put a little bit of a twist to our recovery. And I'm going to actually look at the trade setups, and I'm going to look to possibly look to trade a trend trade strategy back to the target, which means this. We were trading, let's say, uh, let me just take, for instance, like US dollar Canadian. Uh, oh, yeah, US dollar Canadian. US dollar Canadian, we were looking to sell. Price continued to rally, 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 rally. We got stopped out, stopped out, stopped out. We just couldn't take any more because the stop losses got in the way. And we went ahead and got stopped out. We didn't move our stop losses. We just got stopped out. Now, as price starts working its way back down, we're going to see a short-term trend working its way back down to our target. We're going to go ahead and trade this from a swing trading point of view. And work our way back into that position, especially after we got stopped out and taken out of our positions. We're now going to go ahead and work it back to those targets. So we've got a lot of work to do over, uh, over the next couple of weeks as we go into recovery mode. Now the question here is, do you only trade this strategy? And if you do, maybe this is a learning curve. Maybe this is something for you to think about and say, hey, you know what, big dog? Maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start diversifying my trading a portfolio all right and only not just follow this strategy but follow more of a swing trade based strategy because if you were swing trading you would have caught these moves and you would have made some good money with these swings all right so if you're swing trading fantastic great if you've got some sort of scalping strategy as well throw it in what the heck all right it, you know as long as you don't go ahead and trade the same account on all these different trading strategies you have to separate your trading account so you can go ahead and actually monitor how well you're doing on each approach, which each trading approach. So spread the risk around, trade it differently, but go ahead and make sure that you trade on different trading accounts so you can track how it's doing. All right, very important. So this trading strategy, we haven't done this well over this last couple of weeks. And, and let's see, traders, I'm a real trader, you're a real trader, right? So we're going to be real with each other. There's no hidden details. There's, everything's transparent. This wasn't a good two weeks for us. It absolutely wasn't. But what we do know is we've got enough equity, we've got more buying power, or at least we've got some buying power still left to be able to recover and get back on track for 2020. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what's going on. So this is the uh, situation with regards to the marketplace. We're going to go ahead and make sure that we understand exactly what it is that we're trading. All right. We have to absolutely understand what we're doing and how we're trading. So let's go ahead and take a look and see uh, this morning. And uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Bill says, uh, uh, a good uh, good morning, had my best day ever yesterday on the Euro. Uh, he gave me a thousand pips. Fantastic. Well, good for you, Bill. All right, good for you. Um, 
<laughs> Karen says uh, the forex uh, is infected. Actually, no. Uh, look here. There's one thing that we have to also be uh, completely aware of, right? And and that is if you go ahead and take a look at the uh, the Tokyo market, right? And you start looking to trade during the Tokyo session. Check out the spreads on like the pound crosses and euro crosses. They're like 20, 23 pip spreads. All right. So definitely uh, the Tokyo market is a little shaky at the moment right now. There is thin trading. And during thin trading, brokers are going to start protecting themselves, you know, widening the spread. And then uh, allowing, allowing the market to go ahead and do what it needs to do. But they're not taking any risk on it. There's no doubt about it. In fact, I tried to place a couple of orders last night, you know, when the spread started tightening up a little bit. And it was like reject order reject order because it's saying off price off price off price are you kidding me that's how volatile the market is that you can't even get your price that it's actually trading at right now and it took me about five minutes to actually get in on a trade which is absolutely insane but this is what brokers are going to do they're going to protect themselves because what the banks are doing the banks are going ahead and manipulate the price to to a certain level and then by the way that big pound drop you know the big pound drop a lot of traders i'm not going to right now i'm going to go and show you something here very interesting stuff right very interesting stuff check this out i'm going to go to the uh, pound uh let's go to the pound uh, us dollar right here uh no pound aussie that's the one i want to look at so let's go to the pound aussie i'm going to flip it over to our pound aussie right here check this out all right isn't it uncanny how price goes ahead and moves just above that high? Just about that. You know why? Because there's a lot of retail traders that are uh, that are who are selling the market short, and when it broke through this level right here, guess what? They're like, I'm out. They've got their stop losses there. They just uh, got to a point where they are just absolutely, just absolutely. Um, and by the way, sorry for that. They're just absolutely uh, crazy about the fact that price has gone ahead and traded above that level. And so if price trades above that level, they are absolutely saying, I'm out. But look how price eventually goes ahead and turns around and heads to the downside. All right. Uh, you should be able to see the charts right now, guys. There's a chart up. Just let me know if the, uh, if the charts are up, if you can see the charts right here. All right, you got it? Okay. So there seem to be a, we seem to be having a little bit of a technical issue today, but uh, we are back on track, so we should be good to go. So anyway, so we got this set up right here where price has gone ahead and uh, bounced off this level right here. Check that. Bounce off the level right there and headed back south. Look at that big bearish move right here. We're still inside this channel. We're still inside this channel. And so it's also important for you to know that if anything, if you're trading, if you are trading a, um, um, if you're trading a strategy that uh, requires you to get in on a trade when the daily candle is still active, just be short term trading. Just be scalping the market. All right. And make sure that you get out. All right. Before, uh, before price starts moving against you. All right. So make sure that you protect the position very quickly. And then when the price goes ahead and moves against you, you can certainly get out and then wait for the daily candle to close out to make sure that you understand what the directional bias is. Okay. But this is the pair that we spoke about early on. This is the pair that moved. Look at this. I'm going to go ahead and pull up a measurement right here. Take a look over here. This is the daily trading range. So, so price moved up and it closed out 200 pips after the low right here. But look at the movement that we had for the whole day. That was a thousand pips right here. Now, I want to remind you that this, and let me go ahead and see how, right here. This was the open right here. Price moved up 730. Hold on, this is not the pair that I was actually referring to because this is only a 730 pip move and then moved down another thousand pips. So it moved up 700, then it moved down a thousand. And then moved up 200, uh, 230, 50. So that was, uh, call it a 2,000 pip, not a 3,500, but this pound Aussie was a 2,000 pip move for the day. All right. That was crazy. Now look at this right here. Today, we had the same sort of movement. Look, well, not very, we had also a lot of movement. We had 542 pip move today. 
All right. So from the open right here, it moved down 300, moved up 250, so that'll be 500 moving up, and then then moved back down again 185, 184. So this is a lot of volatility. The daily ranges are really getting wide. They really getting wide. So what is the game plan, Gary? The game plan is to now address the trades we're in and let's start recovery. Let's start the recovery mode, right? And so the recovery mode is going to go something like this. Let's go to uh, uh, Euro Aussie dollar. Let's take a look at Euro Aussie dollar. I'm in still three positions. I've liquidated some of them, but I'm in on three positions on this. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Euro Aussie, right? And uh, here it is here. Here's Euro Aussie. Now, your Aussie is starting its way down, but I've got to be real about what the markets are doing, right? I want to be absolutely real. Now, take a look here. We have this long term, and let me just kill this these fibs. Let's just clean up a little bit here. All right, so we can we want to make sure that we we're not complicating things. We we simplifying things. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put that trend line back in here. Okay, so now the price. Notice that. We are, from a swing trading point of view, if I was a swing trader on the Euro Aussie dollar, what would I do when prices comes up here to resistance? All right. I would want to look to, to sell it off. All right. I would look to go ahead and sell it off. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do on this one right here, I'm going to go ahead and move down to a lower time frame. Now, I'm going to go to a 15 minute time frame right here. And maybe even I can go down to even a lower one than that. But let's go ahead and kill this. Uh, right here. Let me go to sorry. I mean to a higher one. Let's go to one hour Now the reason why I wouldn't want to go focus on the on the, 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 the one hour time frame because the one hour time frame actually still, still tells me that I'm bullish All right, I'm still bullish on the one hour Despite the fact that we had this bearish move to the downside right here. The one hour says no well, that was just a recovery move So it's not really lining up with what I'm seeing on the daily because the daily has moved back inside back below the trend line and because we back below the trend line I want to be able to get in and start selling that pair to the downside, okay? And in order for me to be able to do that, I have to look for a, uh, for a time frame that lines up with my uh, with my uh, trend bias, okay? Does it make sense? I have to line it up with my trend bias. And so what I'm going to do is I want to move down to my oh sorry, I'm going to move down to the 15 minute time frame right here, and I'm going to look at this and I'm say okay. From a trend-based approach, all right, let's go ahead and get fancy, all right? We haven't done this in the training room, but we're going to do this right now. Take a look right here. As we have a downward trend line, all right, as we place in a downward trend line right here, I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now, granted, this is a 15-minute time frame, all right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be looking to sell Euro pound sell. I want to sell. So I'm going to use a trend trading strategy. My trend trading strategy is around, it's, 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 a, it's a, um, a strategy called right trader mats. All right. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be looking for price to sell off. Now, as soon as price moves below my blue channel right here, and shows me a bearish candle, it's going to be time to sell off, right? Now, let's see here. Um, if you're wondering and saying, well, big dog, hold a second here. Um, are you saying that you're going to go ahead and sell it when it turns red? What if, What happens if I'm not at the computer? What happens if I cannot be at the computer 24-7 to watch this? Well, I'm going, to be, um, I'm going to be using automation for this, all right? I'm going to be using automation for this. Now, I am going to say, say this, all right? I'm not ready to go ahead and start jumping in on this trade right now. So right now, it's Friday. It's fishing day. It's golfing day. It's not time to go ahead and start putting some trades because I'm not looking for a quick scalp. And if I was, I would look at the European session and trade only the European session. It's now Friday, um, um, early morning here in the US. The market's going to start slowing down. We may get, of course, some volatility of between uh, now and 12 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time, but eventually it's going to slow down and I don't really want to go ahead and get in a trade that I'm going to see some sort of correction move or some sort of gap in the market on on, uh, um, on uh, Sunday open, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until Sunday, but I'm preparing myself right now as to what I'm going to do and what my game plan is. 
So my game plan right now is I'm going to look for all selling opportunities on Euro Aussie dollar. Just because the daily time frame, everything I'm seeing right now is, is saying, hey, big dog, it's time to start looking to sell on Euro Aussie dollar. Any sort of rallies, sell on the rallies and so, so I'm looking for a sell on. So that's my game plan on this one right here. So I'm going to sell on rallies on the Euro Aussie dollar. Now, please go ahead and write this down. All right, write it down. All right, write down exactly what I'm saying right here. Sell on Euro Aussie dollar. Now we are in positions and I've got three positions in and let's go ahead and take a look with the targets at. My targets at, uh, let's see here, 82.74. So 82.74 is where I sold at. That's my average sell at. But my average uh, price uh, is, uh, and I'm in the money right now, but my target looks like it's going to be down here. Let's see here. 70. Um, you know what? I think I added on to this position. Yeah, you know what? I added on this, this position. And I added this to, onto this position um, this last week. Let me see. Uh, you're, yep, that's right. I did. Okay, so what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to look for uh, price. And I'm going to go ahead and add on. So I don't have a target on this one right here, which is fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and look for a target on my larger time frame right here. So this is the 50 minute time frame. It's not a larger time frame, but it's a 50 minute time frame. So I'm going to go ahead and look for the target. Now, what is the target going to be on this? Uh, the market's going to move in waves and I'm going to use this large wave right here as my target. All right. And you can also see that price will meet up with the back with the bottom side of the trend line right here as well. So this is where I'm going to look for. I'm going to sell Euro Aussie dollar and I'm going to chase after this target. How far is this target? This target is at 69.62. 69.62. Let's see here. That's about 1,243 pips going south. Could we get there? Well, yeah, we can. If you look at the daily time frame right here, look at the daily time frame. To get to this support right here, that's 1,500 pips. So we've got zero support coming off this move all the way down to this, uh, these highs right here. So 70, uh, sorry, 166.07 is where the support is right here. And that's about, fifth, call it 1,600 pips to the downside. So could I, could I chase off the 1,200 pips going south? Yes, I can. All right. So I'm going to be looking to sell come Sunday. I'm going to be selling everything that rallies on the Euro uh, Aussie dollar. If I see a rally, I'm looking for a sell opportunity. All right. And I'm going to sell it short. So that's my game plan on the, the Euro uh, Aussie dollar. And uh, let's go ahead now and take a look at the next currency pair that I have open. All right. To speed up the recovery. Here is a uh, another pair. Euro uh, CAD. Uh, Euro CAD looks like my target set at 43.27. Uh, 43.27, we'll keep a note on that. But let's go ahead and take a look at Euro CAD right here and make it make a. All right, so here's the Euro CAD. The first thing you notice, I always go to the daily time frame to establish what's going on with this pair. And yeah, we can see, oh, snap. Wait a minute. Look how prices come back down to this uh, level of support right here. Now, I said decision making, decision making. Once we get to this point, uh, so what we need to do is go ahead and compress this right here. Wow. Price is down here. Filled up the gap. We're going to see support here. All right, what are we in here? Let me see what the, what the situation is here. We're in five position right here. We just drive our target down there we're about 95 pips up on these trades hmm let's see here 90 oh yeah let's go down to the lower time frame here's the 15 right here All right, so I am going to hold on. I'm going to hold on until Sunday on this one right here. Okay. 
And what I'm going to look for on Sunday is I want to see if we uh, trade below the support level that we found here on the daily 152.15. Uh, so 52.15, this is going to be key. If we can, uh, if we trade below that level there, then we're coming back down to the back side of this uh, trend line right here, which is another 475 pips going south. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to do any selling, additional selling on this one yet until I'm broken through the support level. Because as a swing trader, I'll be looking to buy at the support right here. And I don't want to do any sort of buying at this point in time until I know what's happening right here at the back side of the trend line. So let's see if we can go ahead and trade through it. Sunday, I'll have to make a decision on this. And if I do, I do know we're at resistance here, so we should be selling off. Uh, based on a smaller time frame, but because we had a very key level of support based on a larger time frame I'm gonna hold off on this a little bit. All right In fact, let me see here All right, so I'm, I'm gonna do this um, On this particular one right here um, I'm gonna go ahead and actually close out the positions. I'm gonna clear up these trades so let me clear this one. I'm going to clear it up and I'm going to re revisit this again on Sunday. And I'm not going to go ahead and uh, uh, trade against it. I'm going to wait and see what it does at that support level before I make a decision. So I'm going to go ahead and close out these positions. And uh, that should be it. Looks like there's one more position still left there. Where is it? Uh, There it is there. Let me just close it out. All right, we're done. So we're out. We're done. I'm going to go ahead and actually remove my EA from here. I'm going to remove the EA because I'm going to replace it with a different EA come Sunday. But I'm going to go ahead and take a look and see exactly how we set up on this particular setup. All right. So I want to go ahead and take because uh, if I go to my charts right here, and I look at my targets for the week. Uh, this is the target that we're chasing after still, right? We've got a few targets actually, in fact. This one right here is my lot. So I'm going to chase after this target. This target is a what we call a missed target. And I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm just going to go ahead and increase that line. So we can see it better. All right, there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and chase after this target right down here. That's the level I want to go ahead and chase after. And I'm going to use a trend-based strategy to go ahead and target that. And that price is trading at, or this is trading at around about 588 pips. Okay? So I'm going to use a trend trade-based strategy to trade it. Look at the RSI. Was it an oversold condition? So we're expecting some retracement. So come Sunday, we'll pay attention. Now, we may just get a bounce off this. All right? So Sunday, we might just get a bounce off this uh, resistance that we have right here, or this past resistance becomes support, a little bounce, but then we will eventually go ahead and break through that. If I go to the, the 15 minute time frame and I see anything bearish on the 15, now bearish could mean this, right? It means it means that price, and that's why I decided to close out because I'm looking over here and I'm, I'm seeing um, uh, you know a wave structure that may go ahead and indicate that this could be my fifth wave right here. So this is my third wave, this is fourth. We had then of course one that was creating a, uh, this is a um, leading diagonal. All right, so price went in and created wave one, three, four, and five down here. So maybe we're going to get a little bit of correction. We've come back to retest my uh, right trade and max channel line and then continue to work its way back down. So we may have a correction right here and be able to get in at a higher price and sell it back down south again. That sounds like a great plan. We're going to go ahead and follow through with that. So come Monday, We'll probably be looking for selling opportunities because uh, we'll prepare it on Sunday. So let's go ahead and take a look now at the next setup. That's the, uh, what other currency pair am I in here? Uh, I am in, let's see, yeah, let's see, Euro JPY. No, nothing in on the Euro JPY. Uh, well, let's just go through the pairs that I've got here.
Uh, Euro Aussie we've covered. Uh, okay, US dollar CAD looks like it's still got a couple of positions in on Euro. Uh, Euro US CAD. So let's go to US CAD right here. Take a look. Now, if you might, if you watched my video that I posted a couple of days ago, talking about dollar index and US oil. Uh, then uh, you would have gone ahead and started paying attention to Canadian dollar. I said, hey guys, watch the Canadian dollar. It's coming up. It's, it's, it's creating a very key level of resistance and, and we're going to be looking to sell at that resistance or at least to sell off at that resistance. All right. And so as I go down to the lower time frame on this one right here, I'm going to be also looking at a sell off on this. I want to go ahead and jump in and trade this pair going south, but I've got to be very smart about how I get in on those. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and put in some trend lines right here. And the most important thing right now is wait for a retracement. When price comes back up here, I'm going to go ahead and look to sell. So I want to sell on the US dollar CAD, but I want a little bit of a correction move. I want price to come back up to resistance and then sell up to resistance. So I'm going to wait for this to happen. If I go to the uh, larger time frame right here, we may end up closing out with a beautiful evening star. So there may be a retest of the evening star, but then a continuation sell off to the downside. And so if I look at this right here, I'll be looking for price to come back to retest this level of uh, support here, the 2019, uh, 2017 high. So we can see price come back down to about 37.86. All right. And that is uh, currently right now, what is that? About 500 pips to the downside. Yep. About 500. So. Wait for a bit of a retracement, but we're going to be looking to sell on Sunday. So come Sunday, any sort of correction, any sort of rally that we see on the US dollar CAD, we look to sell it off to the downside. Okay, that's on the US dollar CAD. So US dollar CAD, I've got a trading plan as to how I'm going to go ahead and recover on that. Let's go take a look at the targets that we're chasing after on this. And I'm going to go for that. Man, look at this. This has been brutal. But you can see right here, we've got missed targets here. We've got missed targets here. We're going to miss target over here. Man, are you kidding me? Plenty missed target. So this looks like just before the um, the gap in the market or just just right here. Here's the uh, big gap that we had a couple of weeks ago. So um, this gap will be filled and we'll be chasing after that target. That target is at 134, right? 134. If we're going to get to that price, all right, that means that we're going to have to start taking out some trend lines, all right? Someone's going to have to start beating on someone here. And uh, that means that if you take a look over here, we'll be heading through the support here, support there to get down to this trend line right here. And that trend line is going to be at 134. So it's very possible that we could go all the way back down to retest that. I'm going to kill some of these uh, FIB levels right here and clean up the charts a little bit because we don't need that. Okay. So we're going to see price coming back to retest this level right here, right, where the breakout took place. And maybe even possibly this upward uh, trend line. But the point is, we're going to follow this downward channel. We're going to start selling on the 15 minute time frame. When we lose on the 15, we'll move it up to the one hour. If the one hour goes ahead and gives us some better confirmation, which by the way, I don't think it is yet. No. You see here, this is the reason why we're getting the bounce. We're getting the bounce off that uh, channel line right here. So that retracement was great. Now we're going to get another uh, uh, push to the upside and then a further downside move. As you start seeing the one hour start heading to a bearish trend. All right. So we'll go ahead and monitor that. But the 50 minute time frame is telling us let's wait for a bounce and then we'll sell on the bounce. All right. Um, that's going to be on the uh, US dollar CAD. Let's go ahead and take a look. So US dollar CAD, I'm going to look to sell on US dollar CAD. And then uh, Aussie, uh, we've got Aussie US dollar right here. We are in plenty of those. And Let's see here, Aussie USD. All right, so we're buying Aussie USD, and we were up uh, at our first entry point. We're still chasing our target. We did all right. We're doing okay on this particular pair. So uh, we are chasing after our target up here at the top. You can see there it's 63.29. 63.29 is going to still give us our. There it is. There. Um, let's take a look here. All right, so 63.29. So we can see here that we broke through this. We broke through that support right here. Price went up to retest it. We were going to close out. We closed out with that big bearish candle, right? Or bullish candle because it's a, 
an indecision candle right there and it did that at support you know anytime you have indecision candles forming at support or resistance you need to pay attention to that right it's going to be um, that's going to be important to keep an eye on those type of things so we're definitely at that support level and we're going to go ahead and make sure that we pay attention to that as price gets to um the next level of support or resistance now i'm going to go ahead and look at this and i'm say we've got a lot of room to the upside right here look at that i mean we've got price that needs to go back up to this level right here and then of course that level there so um we're going to mark off both these levels but this level seems to be more significant at this point in time all right and so as we go back again we're going to trade back above the trend line and we're going to head back up to the upside now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go back down to the lower time frame i'm going to pull up the 15 which i have open already and i'm going to go ahead and draw in my trend lines all right and i'm going to go ahead and say that this is set up to go much higher so as soon as i get a bullish set, uh, bullish set up on the aussie us dollar come sunday I'm going to go long on Aussie US dollar. So any sort of recovery that we've seen right here, uh, or at least a bearish move that we see right here, uh, it's going to create an opportunity for us to go ahead and look to go buy long. So I want to go long on Aussie US dollar. I'm just going to wait, and wait for the opportunity. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look right here. So bullish on Aussie US dollar. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my arrow right here. Doesn't necessarily have to be at the back side of this trend line. As soon as I see a bullish signal, I'm going to go ahead and trade that. All right, let's go ahead and take a look and see what else we've got. Um, we've got uh, pound, uh, euro pound. I'm sure a lot of uh, traders are short on euro pound. Uh, euro pound also had its rallies, but hey, listen here. You know the thing about euro pound? Look at that right here at resistance are you kidding me let's see now traders look at that fault breakout right here coming back again full bullish mode right here we should be selling on euro pound so let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, trend euro pound we're in the channel so we can go ahead and continue to hold short on euro pound to the bottom of that channel so any sort of bearish signal that we see on this one right here guess what time to go ahead and sell it off so there's that signal right here. Let's go ahead and put that in. We've got a lot of room to the downside. So any sort of rally that you see, sell on rallies going south on the euro pound. We're looking to sell on Sunday. All right, Sunday, I'm going to go ahead and look for selling signals. Now, traders, listen here. I, I just don't want you to go into a uh, um, go into recovery mode, right? We all need to go into recovery mode. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to go into a panic recovery mode. And panic recovery mode means like, oh man, I took a 10% loss, I took a 15% loss. Now I've got to make it up in a short period of time. Well, the first thing is you use short period of time in your sentence. Don't do that, all right? Just give it time. You know, if, so what? If it takes you three months, four months to be able to recover. But don't try and speed up the process too quick that you go ahead and you add too much equity into a trade and over leverage yourself and then if the price goes against you you're taking a bigger loss that's just going to put yourself more under pressure and and it's not going to look pretty uh, at the end of the day so just recover the recovery doesn't necessarily have to be over a, a, a one or two months right there's too many traders out there and trust me i've been around i've had a lot of downside action moves and i've been in these uh, drawdowns and have to recover and that's just part of trading right um but the most important thing is the process of you the process that you take through this recovery mode all right don't get into panic recovery all right let's go ahead and recover now remember if you're diversifying your risk on other strategies then you don't have to be worried about just this trade account building up fast all right because you can focus on other things that can help you generate income for yourself and and be able to still pay the bills right because that's important or else just go ahead and claim money from president trump he's already paying out uh, quite a bit of money based on the stimulus packages so Hey, send in your uh, send in your uh, your uh, your banking details and let him go ahead and pay you. All right. Um, and if you're not in the U.S., I guess you got a problem. But the thing is this: um, recovery mode is going to take place and it's going to take place slow. If we do get a fast recovery, fantastic. If we get some great movements in the market and we recover quickly, fantastic. But that's not the game plan, right? That's not the game plan. So be 
diligent in your recovery mode. All right, be diligent in your recovery mode. Um, all right. So now, if we go ahead and continue, uh, the uh, pound, euro pound, we will look to sell. All right. Any rally, sell on the rallies. All right. We're going to be a sell in the market right here. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, what else we got here. And I mean, look here, it's a no-brainer. With us over here at the top here, we're expecting price to move down all the way here to $83 a barrel. Uh, sorry, I'm thinking oil now. Uh, 0 0.8300, all right? That's what we're going to be doing right here. All right, so that's it. Done. Um, and then if we go ahead and take a look at uh, some more currency pairs right here. And I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'm giving you sort of an, uh, an understanding of exactly what my game plan is, right? How we're thinking, how we're going to approach this from a, from a trading perspective, right? So euro, um, euro pound covered, and then Aussie CAD. Who? What is Aussie CAD doing? That one is uh, in a, in another trading account. That's actually my thorn in the side on my, on another trading account. Is the Aussie CAD? Let's take a look and see what Aussie CAD is doing. So Aussie CAD has gone ahead and for two days now, uh, it's gone ahead and pff, spiked up, spiked down, spiked up, spiked down, and really have done nothing to help our uh, um, our situation. But the one thing that is comforting here is that we have seen indecision, all right? Despite the fact that the market is not broken up to the upside, could just mean that maybe the Tokyo market or the start or the, uh, the Japanese market just needs to get into recovery mode. And it, and it is. We're already starting to see, and I'm going to go ahead and see if I can pull up here. Just hold this again. I'm going to pull up here. Uh, this is the uh, Japanese stock index. And you can see right here that, we're at a level of support. In fact, in my, one of my videos, I actually posted that. And I said, hey, look at that. We're at support level. We're expecting a bounce. We have seen a little bit of recovery over the last uh, few days. And this is a weekly time frame. I can move that down to a daily right here. And you can see that there has been a recovery. All right. We have seen a recovery right here. And so, um, so with that being the case, if we're going to see an indecision close out this week, then there's a very, very good chance that we're going to start seeing uh, a recovery over the next couple of weeks as price holds up at the support level. So the uh, Japanese uh, stock market is, and I've looked at the Tokyo market too, are going to see some recovery. All right, we're going to see some recovery, and it may take a few more days, but we're going to start seeing recovery because already they start to, um, uh, you know, disclose that uh, uh, companies are opening doors in, in China. Uh, people go back to work, uh, they've seen no new infection reports coming through. Um, so all of this is starting to show that things are turning around and turning around for the, for the better. And so when that starts happening and we start seeing a recovery in the Tokyo market, we are going to start seeing a recovery in the Aussie crosses and all the Aussie pairs um, and also the New Zealand crosses. We are going to start seeing a recovery from that. And so it's just a matter of being patient on that. So this right here is just us saying, okay, you know, price is at the moment right now trading in an indecision. Let's go down to the lower time frame. Let's take a look and see what's going on here. So this is the 15 minute time frame right here. And so the 15 minute time frame is important to me because it gives me short term opportunities, especially when you got daily trade, uh, daily trading ranges as wide as what we have right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clean up house. All right. And I'm going to start off with my train line. And oh, that's not a train line. I'm going to go ahead and place train line right here. And then right here on the 15 minute time frame, I can see that, hey, listen here. We set up to go long, right? Despite this big recovery that we've just seen right now, right? Despite this big recovery that we've seen right now over the last. Price is actually at a support level right here. So we should be looking to buy year long going up. So let's go back to our system right here. Let me go do this. So what is our positions here? Let's see, uh, uh, Euro, so Aussie CAD. So Aussie CAD, I'm in the money right now, 85 pip, but uh, we're back at this uh, entry point right here. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is, I, I, I'm gonna throw in another level right here. I'm gonna go ahead and buy in with another order here, and I'm gonna buy it in at this level right here. So I'm putting two orders in here, right at this point, because I'm expecting price to continue. I'm at a support level already, and I wanna go ahead and continue to buy. 
So I'm at a support level right here. I want to go ahead and continue to buy because I'm seeing price moving up to all the way up to this level right here. Let's go mark it off. Um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to see price moving up to around about 88. So we could go another 400 pips up. All right? Or 500 actually. We could easily go up another 500 pips. So I'm going to do this. And then come Sunday, all right, come Sunday, when price goes ahead and trades through this downward trend line right here, I'm going to be a buyer again. I'm going to be buying, going long on this particular setup right here. All right? So as soon as price goes back above this level, it's going to be time for me to buy. So I'm going to go ahead and put this up right here and say that on Sunday, I'm going to be looking to buy on Aussie CAD. All right? Specifically, if we close out with these indecision candles here, two indecision candles here on the daily. So two days in a row, indecision, indecision. And I know why it's indecision. The Tokyo market still needs to sort out what it needs to sort out. But eventually when it gets all cleared up, we're going to go ahead and see price moving back up again. All right? So this is definitely going to be a buy opportunity right here. All right? We just got to wait for price to go ahead and start moving back up north. So there's a buy opportunity there. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what else we got. And I'll cover one more pair and then we'll go ahead and close off for today. All right? And let's go take a look here and see one more pair right here. And it's going to be, let's take a look and see pound JPY. We've got eight positions in on that. All right, that should be a money. Uh, let's see, a pound JPY. So we're in the money on the pound JPY. We're doing good. I don't actually, actually need to add anything to this because we've maintained quite a lot of our positions still. If we got to a max of 10 and we lost to 2, we're still holding eight positions. So uh, pound JPY hasn't been too bad. You know, we've been actually pretty good, solid on this one right here. But let me go to pound JPY. And just take a look and see what it looks like. And I don't need to do anything on Pound JPY because it's doing everything it needs to do here. Okay. All right. So we add an, another support level right here. If we trade above that, uh, we'll go move, move up to the next support level, which is actually our resistance level now. Uh, and that's another 500 pips going long. So as soon as we break through this, we know we're going to go ahead and channel up to the next resistance. So I don't have to do anything on this. And also, if you take a look at the actual trend line right here. You'll notice that if we make an adjustment to this trend line, because we did take out the low right there. So I've got to make an adjustment to this trend line, which is going to be something like this. Okay. I'm going to clean up some of the FIPS here so we can get, have a nice clean start here. And I'm going to go ahead and readjust this trend line. Because now, this trend line becomes that right here. Now, isn't that amazing how price... Actually, once we made that adjusted trend line, how price really comes back down to this level right here and now starts moving back up north. So we're at the bottom of a downward channel and we're looking for price to move back up to the top of the channel, right? So we're, we're looking at this. Also, look how we had a very significant low right here, all right, all time low at 124.85. Price popped its head through that level, all right? Just to go ahead and stop out traders, retail traders that had the stop below there. That's what the banks are going to go ahead and do. And then once price went ahead and traded through that level, we saw price start moving back up again. So we're on and up. And fortunately, look, the only thing I would be doing on this, if, if I had no positions in on this, I would be looking to buy on the dip. So I'd absolutely be looking to buy on the dip. But for right here, we should be good. All right. We've got eight positions in on this. This is going to be a money maker for us as price goes back up to this level. So as price continues to rally and we, we're chasing after our target. Our target is all the way up here. Let's take a look. There's a target we're chasing after. We're chasing after this level right here. And that's around about 140. That's another 1,000 pips going long. Listen, the way the markets have moved lately, 1,000 pips should be a, 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 an easy couple of, uh, couple of hours, right? Um, but in any case, be it as may, we're looking at about a thousand pip move to the upside. Now we may not go that far up. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. Let's take a look and see here. Okay. All it is, no, we may not. All right. We may just go ahead and trade where we where we look at a proper recovery. When we see a good recovery taking place, then uh, we're going to go ahead and say, oh, we're going to call it a day. All right. We're going to cut, cut ourselves off from these uh, position, positions that we're in. We've recovered. Now we're going to go back to normal trading again. So we're just going to do all of this inside normal trading, um, sorry, until we get to normal trading. And then we'll go ahead and continue to just do what we do every single day, every single week. But for right now, it's going to be pretty much a recovery point. Okay. 
So a couple of changes, all right? A couple of small changes that we're going to be making. Not a whole bunch. A couple of small changes we're going to make. But we're going to go ahead and recover. When we get into recovery mode, and I'll announce when I'm at recovery. And once we're at recovery mode, uh, or at least uh, recovery level, uh, then we're going to go back to normal trading the game. All right? Go ahead and put in our positions in. But the one thing that we're going to do, or at least run our ears, right? But the one thing that we're going to do, all right? We're absolutely going to pay a little bit more attention to these type of crazy fundamental movers all right and and so what we have to make sure about is that you've got the right equity management in your trades at all times all right and limit to how many positions you want to go and enter before you start thinking about stand aside reevaluating the market and then going ahead and deploying trades again so what i'm saying is this if you said that you're only going to place in five trades not 10 like i did but five trades and price moves through all five trades and you take a loss what is your max loss and is that max loss with inside your risk tolerance? Because if it is, then you're fine. If it isn't, you may need to make some adjustments, all right? So always, at all times, let me tell you something. For tra trading, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the time that I've been trading for close to 30 years, the time that I've been trading, right, the one thing that I've really come to terms with is that it's not necessarily the strategy that's going to make you successful. It's how you manage your positions inside the market. And those that can manage their positions inside the market and yes listen here I get, I get it sometimes you get a little aggressive and you get a little bit uh, you deeper drawdowns than you than you really wanted to uh, but then you just need to go into recovery and use that account and say okay recovery mode let's go ahead and uh, focus on another trading account another trading strategy but when you're in that when you're in that uh, that, that that trading environment the one thing that I've come to terms with is that over the years that if you apply good equity management on your trades yes there are going to be times like this where we have flash crashes, we have these big uh, pandemic moves in the market. But it, but if you've still gone ahead and made sure that you've got proper equity management in your trades, you will get through those periods, right? You'll get through those periods, and you can go ahead and either put that portfolio on the side and just let it work its way back on recovery, and then go ahead and focus on another portfolio, another strategy, and go ahead and adjust and work on that while the other one's recovering, right? So. Part of trading is not to be uh, uh, not to be over leveraged. Number one, number two, to make sure that you are uh, allowing recovery time and not trying to speed up that process because that could really put you into a worst case scenario. Go ahead and press the reset button and say, "Hey, this is the level I want to get my account back up to, and when it gets up to that level, then I'm going to go ahead and put more focus in on that account again." All right, traders, let's go ahead and take a look and see how it goes for the next couple of weeks, man, and see what our recovery looks like. Um, I'm uh, ambitious about it because I really know that we can this type of trading strategy that we follow we can turn anything between um, uh, five to seven percent a month and so if I'm down 15 percent on my trading account to go ahead and recover 15 percent it just means I'm gonna have to wait two months to go ahead and do that just by normal and standard trading now we've gone ahead and escalated a little bit of the uh, the recovery mode by using some sort of trend based strategy so we will recover a little bit quicker but we know that this strategy that we normally follow and you can go ahead and reset right now and say, hey, I'm going to reset right now, start all over again, take my 15% loss, and then go ahead and start looking to recover over the next two months. And if trading goes accordingly, we could make 6 7% per month. Well, all right, let me, let me rephrase that. I could make that based on my risk tolerance that I'm doing, right? So you may have different risk tolerance. So depending on your risk tolerance. But I'm looking at based on how I've managed the account, I could go ahead and make 15%. Uh, over the next couple of months maybe it takes three months to do that all right but at least i know that hey in the next few months it's recovery and then after that then i can start going into normal trading again all right so with that being said everyone have a fantastic weekend you got a little bit more time to watch these videos because you now are uh, well most of you are now at home and self-contained so um with that being the case everyone have a fantastic weekend staying at home and we'll see everyone back again on monday as we go ahead and take a look at the opening markets again. The Stephix Big Dog signing off.